lovelies and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tifa and today we're talking about Bubble. So Bubble is Netflix's most recent anime film that has come out worldwide and basically the premise of this is The Little Mermaid meets parkour meets Death Note? Yeah, I, I, I said that. <laughs> so we're introduced to this world where Basically, the center of Tokyo is stuck inside a bubble. Think under the dome, The Simpsons, if you will. But there are bubbles within the bubble. And basically, you can jump on these bubbles, you can grab onto them, but most people don't know how to control that and don't know how to use that to their advantage within their parkour skills. So how does parkour really fit into this story? <laughs> well, Different teams compete within the bubble, trying to capture the flag in order to get supplies. Now, the film doesn't really explain why they're in the bubble or competing in these games. They are allowed to leave the bubble, but I don't think they're able to come back. Most people do not live in this bubble, but mainly children, teenagers, or young adults that have no family left, are continuing to live within the bubble and they're kind of helping with the research around why this bubble exists and testing the gravity limits. While they're inside this bubble as well, they do have internet connection and connection to the outside world. There are a lot of plot holes in this story, so it's kind of hard to explain and that's probably my main problem with this film. Uh, but I will go into that deeper as I talk about this film and give you guys my review of Bubble. The main character is Hibiki and he has a sensory issue to do with sound, hence the headphones that he generally wears throughout the movie. Five years prior to when this film is set, there was a huge explosion at Tokyo Tower with all of these bubbles which caused some people to die, some people to get injured, and a lot of people lost their family and this bubble kind of encapsulated Tokyo and and we know that Tokyo is quite a hustle and bustle type of city it's very loud and noisy so for someone like Hibiki after this explosion the area within the bubble ends up becoming a lot more quiet and he's able to tune into particular sounds and noises making him one of the only people that can parkour on these bubbles. Yeah, the concept is really strange and very hard to kind of explain. <laughs> but the main premise of this movie, aside from all the parkour stuff, is that it's a retelling of The Little Mermaid in a very interesting and unique way. One of the bubbles turns into a human, and this human is actually what saves Hibiki as he's trying to look for a particular sound that the Tokyo Tower made when the bubbles exploded five years ago. Anytime he hears this sound, he goes looking for it, and then at some point, he falls. The gravitational pull around Tokyo Tower is very different to the rest of the bubble, and he falls into the ocean, causing one of the bubbles to turn into a human and save his life. Similar to The Little Mermaid, if you remember the Disney film, when she pulls Eric out of the water after the ship crashes. She pulls him to shore and saves him. Now this film is quite interesting and it is quite enjoyable if you don't think too hard about it. Their references to The Little Mermaid are very obvious as they do continuously talk about it. Um, the bubble that turned into a human is called Yuta. Uh, because of the song that she sings and the song that the bubbles sing. So Hibiki relates her to that and calls her Yuta. Yuta gets read the story of the Little Mermaid and she realizes it's very similar to her situation and you start to see the connections between the two. This is overly referenced and she literally states the Little Mermaid a fair few times and she also calls Hibiki Prince. So it is very obvious this is the metaphor that they're going for and it's the story that they're kind of reimagining here. Now, I don't want to explain the whole plot any further than that because it's already giving away a lot of spoilers, but it's a weird film and I don't know what I expected, especially since this film is designed by the creator, the design, character designer of Death Note, and it's also directed by the director of Death Note. Kind of expected something a little more harsh or dark. 
um, maybe even a little more biblical, but it's not quite that. <laughs> This is a very beautiful film, but I also see why it has such a mixed reception because some of it really doesn't make sense and there's so many plot holes in this film. I've never seen an anime film with more plot holes in its storyline and that's my main thing to say about Bubble is that the whole storyline is an absolute mess, but it's still so beautiful to watch and it's kind of fun to watch. You do actually get emotional because you understand the story of The Little Mermaid even though it's heavily referenced and you wouldn't have even need to know about it or heard about it to kind of catch on to what they're saying but the film is still so beautiful and the emotional scenes actually make you emotional. The plot is very basic. The plot holes are everywhere but the emotions and the range that is brought to the characters kind of makes it good. And I don't know if anybody else like agrees with that. I tried to look online to see what other people were saying and most reviews were like, it's average. And sure, it's average in terms of plot, but if you're more invested and interested in the characters and seeing what they might do or what their stories are, then you'll probably enjoy this. Even the secondary characters are so much fun and you learn to love them within the film that you want to see more of them. So it's kind of sad that we don't get to see more of particular characters, but it's also, but it's also quite interesting that a lot of these background characters are quite fleshed out. I don't even know if I can give Bubble a rating, but I kind of wanted to talk about it because I wanted to see what other people thought. I. <laughs> As soon as this film came out, a lot of people started hyping it up. I didn't even know that this film was coming and a lot of other people didn't either when I talked to them about it. I mean, the creators of Death Note, the director of Death Note, you'd think there'd be more hype around this, but maybe because Platinum End didn't do as well, not as many people were hyping this film up. So I kind of went into it not really knowing what to expect, which was quite interesting. <laughs> but my main thing is that surprisingly for an anime, despite all the plot holes, it's still so intriguing and the characters are done in such a way that you're interested in finishing the film and watching it because of the characters in particular. They're a lot more fleshed out than the main storyline is, which I don't usually see in anime. Usually it's reversed, so we'll have a more fleshed out story and particular characters won't be fleshed out as much, we won't have as much background, and they're kind of more placeholders within the story than actual developed characters. So it was really interesting to see a film that did the opposite. So I want to know if you guys have seen Bubble or if you're planning to watch it at all, and what do you think about this film? I just have so many questions and I'm so intrigued by it that I'll probably end up having to watch it again. And I think that a lot of other people might think the same thing, which maybe might be what Netflix is going for. I don't know if it was necessarily a good film, but it was an enjoyable film. So that's what kind of matters, right? Let me know down below what you guys think of this film or if you're going to watch this film based off of what I've said. If you'd like me to talk about more anime films, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more otaku related content, then don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.